I'm really interested at the moment, Ariana, how you are adopting this hype cycle of artificial intelligence to become your reality, to actually help with, with health, with productivity. Thank you, Caroline. Yes, we are very excited at Thrive about the way we can bring in generative AI into daily behaviors. Because if we look at the data, we see that these five daily behaviors of sleep, food, movement, stress, and connection dramatically affect our health and our longevity. So the problem is that changing behaviors is not easy, but with AI and creating what we are building, a, a co-pilot, a wellness health co-pilot, it's kind of incredible how this personalization can make dramatic changes at how we adopt healthier habits through micro steps. We are big believers and our scientific advisory board led by BJ Fogg from Stanford is showing all the data that to change behaviors you have to start small. We call mm. them micro steps too small to fail. Small daily changes that incrementally become healthier habits. This hyper-personalization as you reference it in artificial intelligence. Is it already a reality, already being deployed? How comfortable or uncomfortable are people with these sort of intimate cues? Well, that's what is so interesting. People are comfortable giving their own personal data, biometrics, labs, um, calendar to show where they need the stress breaks, provided they get uh, help back, provided they get value, and provided that they are given to others like employers in an anonymized, aggregated way. And once we guarantee that, then people are willing to share personal data. And knowing personal preferences around sleep, around food, around how you like to exercise is critical so that the nudges and the recommendations are hyper-personalized. The other thing, Caroline, that is really important to remind ourselves of is that the healthcare system right now is broken. It's unsustainable. We are now spending 17% of GDP uh, in healthcare, up from 5% in the 1960s, mm. and the results are worse every year. Chronic diseases are skyrocketing, um, one star that I can't get out of my mind is that last year alone we had 150,000 leg amputations, uh, people with diabetes. And the, the human cost, the healthcare cost um, are truly unsustainable. So that's why looking at behavior change as the miracle drug um, is something which we need, we need to take much more seriously. And those CEOs that you are ultimately selling Thrive into, you're having to make partnerships really with the leadership of business, have their buy-in. Do they understand that you need to be acting earlier? We need to take the strain off the healthcare system through these micro changes to behavior that it can ultimately prevent diabetes in the long term? Absolutely. I mean, let me give you one example. We are working with Walmart. We're in our fifth year working together. And Walmart has done incredible um, innovations around healthcare benefits, including Thrive, including fertility benefits. And we're seeing amazing results. We're even giving financial awards to people who meet their goals. And again and again, we see people who lose weight, who even reverse diabetes or hypertension, doing it by beginning to cook at home rather than eating two um, meals or more a day in fast food restaurants. Mm. And we also see the impact in productivity. So we see that whatever employers do for their employees is actually important for the health of the bottom line. And when you're talking to these other business leaders, or when you're just thinking about this, as I know you've written and thought and documented your perspective on artificial intelligence, there is a lot of hand-wringing. There is a lot of concern that, well, technology ends up eating up even more of the way in which we interact with life, ultimately. You've been someone who time and time again has tried to teach us ways in which to put our devices down. 
how do you feel about generative AI ending up becoming sort of our agent, our personalized agent? Well, actually, Caroline, that's what is so interesting. Right now, um, the more primitive form of AI that is uh, um, giving us the algorithmic uh, interventions that we see that uh, get us hooked on Instagram or TikTok or doom scrolling in the middle of the night and are terrible for our health, including our mental health, that can be changed through generative AI that's used for good. The much more sophisticated AI that we have now, and it's going to be even more sophisticated in the next few years, can actually help us connect with what's best in us instead of uh, hooking us to what's worst in us. Even if you take, when you're exhausted, you are much more likely to waste your time on Instagram or doom scrolling. The more rested and recharged you are, the more able you are to make good decisions.